Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host to welcome you in through the squeaking door. We're having a party tonight for two of my favorite corpses. I call them Romeo and Juliet. They're newly dead, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's the daughter of a famous society murderer, and he's the pride of the East Side Morgue. Oh, they're so happy together in their mausoleum built for two. And you should see the bridal casket. Shame it... on you, Mr. Host, making fun of such a tragedy. But, Mary, it was a touching ceremony. Of course, I stood up for the groom. Naturally, the poor fellow couldn't stand up for himself. <laughs> oh, please. It's an occasion for tears, not for laughter. That's right, Mary. Why, when the bride appeared wearing her grandmother's shroud, everyone had to be cheered up with Lipton tea. Now, oh, that's enough. I will not have Liptons mentioned at a time like that. Lipton tea is for people who know how to enjoy life. These are the folks who really appreciate Lipton's famous brisk flavor. Yes, that word brisk, B-R-I-S-K, makes a big difference when you're sitting down to a cup of hot tea. Brisk means that Lipton tea tastes fresh and full-bodied, never flat or wishy-washy. I wish you'd try Lipton's, folks, even if you're not a regular tea drinker, because you just don't know how good tea can be till you know how good Lipton's is. Well, Mary, let's tee off into tonight's story. Hmm? It's called The Shadow of Death, and it's an original radio play by that boogie-woogie man, Robert Sloan. Yes, and our star tonight is Richard Widmark, who plays the role of Howard. All set? Then turn off the lights... And let in the shadow of death. On a lonely dirt road that borders the village cemetery, a single car slows to a stop and parks in the moonless night. Inside it, a man leans back in his seat and reaches for the hand of the girl he loves. Howard. Yes, dear? Why did you stop here? The cemetery is right over there. Oh, I didn't notice. You drove here last night, too. Did I? Yes. <laughs> well, you're not frightened, are you? Tonight I am. You've been so strange, so far away. I, I feel as if I hardly know you. Darling, you mustn't feel that way. What's the matter, Howard? There's something on your mind. I'm going away, Marie. Oh, no. And I'm not coming back. Howard, why? Well, I don't really know if I can explain it. It seems so incredible, and, and yet I know it must be true. What? Something I've discovered about myself. Something strange and frightening, Marie. Wherever I go, I seem to cast a shadow. A shadow of death. I... I don't understand. No, I didn't either at first. I thought it was just a strange coincidence. But it isn't. It's me. I bring death wherever I go. Oh, Howard, you don't really believe that. Well, how can I believe anything else? Haven't you noticed what happens to every living thing I have around me? No. I can't keep a pet of any kind, a cat or a dog. Even a plant dies when I have it in the house. Oh, darling, that's just your imagination. You've been working too hard. You need a rest. No, I'm going away, Marie. I don't want any harm to come to you. Oh, no, please. Nothing's going to happen to me. This is just... What's the matter? Well, nothing. I... I was just looking at the flowers in my corsage. Good heavens. They're dead. You don't believe me either, do you, Doctor? Well, let's not put it on that basis, Howard. After all, I've been trained to look for the physical causes of death, not the supernatural. Then what do you think I should do? Frankly, I'd like you to spend a few weeks away from these surroundings. Go up to the sanitarium I told you about. They'll take good care of you up there. All right, Doctor. I'll make arrangements to go tomorrow. But I know it won't do any good. You'll be surprised, Howard. Two or three weeks from now, you look back on this as a... 
Yes. That's strange. Those goldfish in my aquarium. They're all dead. Tell me the truth, Howard. Are you comfortable here in the sanitarium? They, they don't believe me. They don't believe that people die when I dream about them. People die? Yes, you... didn't you know that? Every time I have a dream about someone, it, it's a sign of death. And the next morning when I wake up, I look in the obituary column and I see the name of the person I dreamt about. Well, Howard, what have they done to you here? Nothing, only they don't believe me. The, the, the dreams, I mean. I had to prove it to them this morning. And it made me feel very bad. What made you feel bad? The dream I had last night. I killed a man, Marie. What? I killed him in my dream. Oh. He was a good friend of mine, too. He lived right across the hall. Oh, Howard, please. You've got to get hold of yourself. But I'm afraid, Marie. I don't want to dream anymore. Oh, darling, I can't bear to see you this way. What way? I'll get you out of here. I promise, Howard. I'll get you out of here today. <laughs> Marie, there isn't a chance of getting him out. You may have to stay in this institution for months. Oh, no. Dr. Gerard, can't you see what's happening to him? He's losing his mind. Well, I know he's taken a turn for the worse. That's all the more reason for keeping him here. It might be dangerous to discharge him now. Then why don't you do something to help him? We're doing everything we can. It's not easy. He persists in thinking he has this strange power of death. Nobody is able to convince him he's wrong. What about the man across the hall? Howard said they were good friends. That's another thing. They were good friends. But unfortunately, that man died this morning. Come in. Ah, good morning, Howard. How do you feel today? Oh, much better, doctor, much better. No bad spells last night? No curious moods? No, I feel fine. Almost well enough to go home. Let me look at your eyes. You will let me go home again, won't you, doctor? Yes, Art, of course, of course. You, uh, haven't had any of those dreams lately, have you? No, no, not for a long time. Are you sure? Well, I, uh, I did have one last night. You dreamt that someone was dead? Yes, I did, but, but, but I, I, I know it's not true. It can't be true. Whom did you dream about, Marie? No, doctor. I dreamt about you. That's why I know I'm wrong. You're a live doctor. Don't you understand? You've proven it to easy, me. Easy, easy now, Harlan. Tell me about your dream. Well, I, I dreamt I was going home. And all the people I'd killed in my dreams were alive again. Yes, go on. Well, somehow or other, I could see my house from this window. And everything was just as it was a long time ago. The flowers were growing. The dog was in the yard. The one that was run over? Yes, everything was well again. And I was well, too. That's why I wanted to go home. But you and Marie's mother didn't want me to. She was in the dream, Marie's mother? Yes, I, I don't know how she happened to be there, but she was. That's all right, Harry. Right. Go on. Well, I started to leave, Doctor, but she held me back. She held my arms like this. And then you jumped up to ring the bell for help. But before you reached it, I was on top of you like this. Oh, I had my fingers around your throat. Oh, dear. And I was squeezing it so hard. I could feel your windpipe bending back oh, dear. until you couldn't breathe anymore. Howard, oh, let go. That's what you said last night, you fool. I got... You wanted me to let go. I, I... I held on until your face turned as blue as it is now. It was almost black before I let you go. But first, first I made sure you were dead. And then I dropped the body. You see, Doctor, my dreams do come true. <laughs> well, have you had any good dreams lately? Howard has. And you know, his dreams don't need interpretation. 
Uh, they need cremation. <laughs> Say, it's a lucky thing that guy works on the night shift. It'd be awful if he had daydreams, too. <laughs> Good gracious, yes. His dreams not only walk, they commit murder. <laughs> Mary, I was about to say that. Please leave the jokes to me. How would you like it if I talked about tea? Hmm? Well, for goodness sake, I listen to the story, too. And I must say, I'm glad I'm not his um, dream girl. <laughs> that does it. Friends, let me tell you about Lipton tea. All right, you win. But it's only because I have something important to say about Lipton's. Folks, did you know that Lipton's is the largest selling brand in the whole world? Yes, and the reason for that is Lipton's well-known brisk flavor. You know, that word brisk is the tea expert's word for tangy, full-bodied tea, for Lipton tea. Ah, uh, Lipton's is always fresh and spirited, never flat or, or wishy-washy. That's why lots of people drink it not just at mealtimes, but whenever they're taking it easy for a minute during the day. So, folks, try Lipton's and get acquainted with that brisk flavor. Well... Let's get back to our dream man and find out what he does in his waking moments. When we left him last, he had just done a little manual work on Dr. Gerard's windpipe. And now, as the good doctor lies comfortably on the sanitarium floor, Howard is in the process of going through his pocket. Well, I'll have to have the keys to your car, doctor. I'll need them to get back home. I hope you won't mind if I hide you under this bed may take them a little bit longer to find the body if I do. But... Yes, who is it? Dr. Frisbee, Howard. May I come in? Well, yes. Yes, I, I'll open the door. What is it, Doctor? Well, I was looking for Dr. Gerard. I thought he was in here. Oh, he, yes, yes, he, he was a moment ago. I, I, I think he went down the hall. Uh, no, I just came from there. I guess he went back to his office. Oh, yes, I guess he did. How are you making out, Howard? Fine, fine, doctor, fine, fine. You seem a little nervous. Your hands are shaking. Oh, well, I... And you see, you've dropped your keys. I'll get them. It's all right, Howard. I wasn't going to take them away from you. But I am wondering how you happen to have any keys in your possession. Well, they're, uh, they're, they're not really mine. Well, whose are they, Dr. Gerard's? Uh, yes, yes, he, he left them here. I, I mean... You mean, he... uh... You stole them from him. No. Now, oh, come, Howard. You can't expect me to believe Dr. Gerard would give you any keys. Now, you'd better let me have them so I can give them back. But I, I Let didn't... me have them, Howard. Thank you. You won't tell him I took them, will you? No, Howard, I won't tell. But uh, please don't take them again. I'll go anyway. I'll get out onto the road and I'll get a hit, yes, sir. I'll get away. I've got to speak to Marie. Going down, mister? I guess not. I guess I'm a... Oh, oh, here comes another one. Hey, stop! Give me a ride, will you? Give me a ride, please, mister? Oh, he's stopping. Hey, hey, wait for me, will you, mister? I'm coming. I'll be right there. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. You, you going into town? Yes, Howard, but you're not. Dr. Frisbee. Yes, I've been watching you ever since you took those keys. I thought you'd try something like this. Well, I, I had to, doctor. I understand. Better get in the car, Howard, so we can talk this thing over. All right. You know, it's silly to run away from our place up there. If you really want to go home, all you have to do is ask. I did ask. When? This morning. Oh, wait a minute. Don't start the car. Why not? There's a truck coming. In back. Where? Oh, Howard, let go of me, Howard! I've got to have this car, Doctor. When I finished with it, I'll return it to you. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Walker. Who's this? Howard. You remember me, don't you? Howard, where are you? In a telephone booth around the corner. You were out in the sanitarium? No, I've been discharged. Dr. Gerard said I could go. You mean you're well again? Yes, I'm completely cured. 
Oh. Oh, I see. You don't sound very happy about it, Mother. Where's Marie? She's, uh... She's out on a date. When will she be back? Well, I, I don't know, Howard. She she didn't say. I've got to see her again, Mrs. Walker. I've got to see her once more before I die. Before you die? Yes, I haven't much longer to live. Now, where is she? Well, I... Uh, I, I think she said she was going to movies. You're lying. I'm not, Howard. I, I, I just can't be sure. But if you go to the theater, you, you might find her there. You don't want me to see her, do you? Uh, no, not until I've spoken to Dr. Gerard. Why? Don't you believe me? Don't you believe I'm well again? No, Dr. Gerard... Never mind what he said. Mrs. Walker, you mustn't dislike me. I'm very fond of you. You... You are, Howard? Yes. I've been thinking a lot about you lately. While I was in the sanitarium. Last night, I even had a dream about you. Keep bringing that number, operator. I've, I've got to locate Dr. Gerard. Why the hurry, Mrs. Walker? Howard, how did you get in here? Through the back door. Put that phone down, please. But I... Put it down, I said. Yes, yes. You lied to me about Marie being at the movies, Mrs. Walker. I, I didn't mean to, Howard. I, I told you I wasn't sure she was there. Where is she? This time I've got to know. Howard, how dare you? Get your hands off me. I'm not in a gentle mood, Mrs. Walker. I'm fighting against time. You've done something wrong, Howard. You've escaped from the sanitarium. No, I've done more than that, Mrs. Walker. I've killed a man. Howard. Two men, three men. I, I can't remember how many it was, but there's going to be one more. Howard, you, you wouldn't kill me, would you? Wouldn't I? What have you done to deserve your life? Uh, there, Let it uh, ring. But, but that may be my call. Your call is coming now, Mrs. Walker. Howard, please. Put down that knife. Will you tell me where Marie is? I told you, I don't know. I don't know. And I'll wait for her. Right here. Howard, you can't. No, no, you can't. Oh. Yes, I can, Mrs. Walker. Hello? Hello, this is Dr. Frisbee, sanitarium calling. Is Mrs. Walker there? I'm sorry. You have the wrong number. Hey, darling. Why, why, Howard. Howard, what are you doing here? I've been waiting for you to come home, darling. Aren't you glad to see me? Oh, yes, of course I am. It was such a surprise I couldn't catch my breath for a minute. Where's Mother? Upstairs. Why? Oh, I just wanted to know. You had no other reason? No. Howard, why are you staring at me? I'm not really staring. I'm just looking at you, darling. It's been such a long time since I've seen you. I'd almost forgotten what you were like. Well, uh, let's go inside. No, if you don't mind, darling, I'd rather go for a ride. You're... You're all right, aren't you, Howard? I, I mean, you're, you're completely well now. Oh, well, can't you see I am? Yes, but I... I yes. Then let's not wait any longer, darling. Come on, we'll go for a ride. <laughs> Getting late, Howard. Don't you think we ought to go back? No, not yet, Marie. You just keep driving. These few moments we have together, maybe I'll... Marie, why are you stopping here? Uh, we're low on gas, dear. I, I don't want to get stuck on the highway. Oh. Yes, ma'am? Will it be? Uh, you, you better fill her up. All right. And uh, have you got a telephone here? Yes, ma'am. Right inside. Thank you. Wait a minute, Marie. What do you want with a telephone? Oh, I was going to call my mother. She'll be worried about me. Oh, no, she won't. She knows you're with me. Besides, uh, she went out for a little while. Well, maybe she's back by now. It won't hurt to call, will it? No, I guess it won't. I'll be right back, Howard. Well, hurry, darling. I want to be with you as much as I can. Yes, I won't be a minute. 
number, please? Operator, quick, get me the police. This is an emergency. Yes, ma'am, right away. Headquarters, Sergeant Dunn speaking. Sergeant, listen carefully. I won't have time to repeat it. The murderer of Dr. John Gerard is right here in a filling station on Route 6 at the Hadley intersection. What shall I do? I can't keep him here. Does he know you're on to him? No. No, he doesn't know I read the story in a newspaper just before I got home. He was waiting there for me, and I haven't been able to get to a phone since. Well, don't take any chances. He's a homicidal maniac. Don't even try to stall him if he wants to leave. No. Just stay where you are and we'll be over there in four minutes. Oh, no, no, that's no good. He won't let me stay here. He'll take me with him. Marie. Oh, he's calling for me now. Marie. Uh, just a moment, Howard. What can I do, Sergeant? What can I do? Well, give me the description of the car, quick. It, it's a dark blue sedan. License number 468J3. We've been going east on Route 6. But... Oh, I can't talk anymore. He's coming. Marie, for heaven's sake, what kept you so long? Oh, I had a hard time getting the number. The... There was something wrong with the lines. But you were talking to somebody. Yes, I, I was speaking to Mother. You were speaking to your mother? Yes. She told me not to stay out too late. You're lying, Marie. No, I'm not, Howard. I talked to her. You talked to the police. That's why you lied to no. me. You did. Your mother's dead. Howard. I know, because I killed her. Howard. Be quiet. Get back into the car. You're coming with no. me. No, no, Howard. You're hurting my arm. Get back in the car. Hey, you leave her alone. Keep out of this, you fool. Leave her alone. I told you to keep out of this. Oh, I know. Hey, put down that wrench. Now put it down. Oh, oh. oh how could you? Never mind. Get into the car. Howard, why are you stopping here? Don't you know where we are, Marie? This is the cemetery. Where we stopped before. Yes. I like it here. It's so quiet and peaceful among the dead. Let's walk through the grounds. Oh, please. Why not, Marie? We're among friends. So many of our loved ones are buried here. It's nice to be near them. Come on, Marie. All right, Howard. You know, darling, we haven't much more time together. The shadow of death has fallen across our path. You said something like that before, but you never told me why. I'm being selfish, Marie. I know I have to die, and I want you to come with me. Why do you have to die, Howard? Because I... I haven't been true to myself, darling. I haven't been true to this power I have. Power of death? Yes. I've helped it along sometimes. Like that dream I had about my friend in the sanitarium. Like the flowers in my garden. Like those fish of Dr. Gerard's. You killed them? Yes. I knew they were going to die. But I shouldn't have helped them. That's why I'm being punished. But Howard, why are you punishing me? I don't want to die alone, Marie. We've been away from each other so much, darling. I I want us to be together from now on. But... Don't be afraid, darling. I'll be gentle, Marie. So gentle. But you're making a mistake, Howard. No. You are. You've forgotten what you've done. You can't kill me, darling. Why not? Why, good heavens, Howard, don't you remember? Don't you remember that day at the sanitarium? You said you dreamt about me? No. No, I couldn't have. Yes, you did. Didn't they tell you what happened? No. Your dream. Your dream, it was true. That's why you can't kill me now. Marie, you... You mean... Yes, Howard. I'm dead. I, I can't believe it. Oh, you must believe it. I... Here, here. Look at this tombstone. My grave is right here. No. Read what it says. Read the name on it. It's your name, Marie. Your name. Marie Walker. Yes. Then you... Then you really are dead. I told you I was, Howard. The shadow of death passed over me. Then let it pass over me. Hey, got him, Sam. Got him the first shot. 
Keep out of the way, miss. He may not be dead yet. No, I... I'm sure he's dead. Well, you certainly had a close call. Took us all this time to locate your car. Finally spotted it on the road. You all right? Yes, I, I'm all right. Yeah. The name of my grandmother's tombstone saved me. How's that? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. Say, that's funny. What? This guy was shot through the shoulder. My bullet wounds weren't serious enough to kill him. What do you mean? Well, I know it sounds crazy, but my shots didn't kill him. He was dead before I hit him. What a shame. Wasting two perfectly good bullets on a guy that was dead all the time. Well, at least they won't have to go far to bury him. Here's one villain who died practically in the middle of his own plot. <laughs> Isn't it funny how many of our stories seem to take place in cemeteries? You know, Mary, I think you ought to open up a concession in the cemetery. And you know what you could sell. Hmm? Don't say it, don't you dare. You know very well that the place to buy Lipton tea is and always will be your neighborhood grocery store. And, folks, that reminds me. You'll find it wiser to buy Lipton's in the larger, more economical size packages. That way, you not only save money, but you also make sure that you won't run short on a beverage that's really a household necessity. Brisk-flavored Lipton tea. Well, before I put the skeletons back in their closets, I'd like to give you a parting word of advice. A body should never be left alone at the morgue at night. After all, it might become slab happy. <laughs> oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is The Whistling Legs by Roman McDougald. Yes, and let me tell you about next week's Inner Sanctum story. Directed by Hyman Brown and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. You know... Usually our stories are about people who live six feet under the ground. But for next week, we've dug a lot deeper. In fact, it takes place in China. <laughs> and as a special added attraction, we've unearthed a new kind of character for you. Unearthed is right. This guy's been dead for 20 centuries. <laughs> and now it's time to close the squeaking door, so... Good night. Pleasant dream. <laughs> Ladies, if your child comes home from school for lunch, you want to give him a quick but appetizing meal. And that's why you should serve Lipton's noodle soup. You see, Lipton's takes no time to prepare, and yet it has a fresh-cooked, old-fashioned, chickeny flavor. And it's just swimming with tender golden egg noodles. Your children will love Lipton's grand homemade taste. So don't forget to serve Lipton's noodle soup. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>